Yeah, I, it was kind of crazy though, like... New Year's an interesting one. Anyone do anything special for New Year? Anyone have any fun stories? Let me know in the chat. I was interested to see if anyone had anything super exciting happen. Um, my night involved sitting around and playing some games and having a few drinks, so... It was, uh... Pretty, pretty laid back New Year. It's like a pretty casual night, not going too hard, just chilling, having fun, talking to friends. It is nice. I actually haven't done anything for New Year for like the last couple of years, so I'm kind of glad I did something this year, even if it was pretty chilled out and relaxing and all the rest of it. Bottom left hand side, red Protoss player is going to be Stats. He is, uh, of course, from Splice. And uh, excited to uh, excited to see him here. Always great for him to be uh, for these players to kind of take part in these events. Obviously, stats qualifies just from having some really good results in SGL Cups, in Leifeng Cups as well. It's really good, good to have him on board. So uh, yeah, how good to see him playing. As we have down to the bottom right hand side. The green Zerg player, it is Wally. So Wally down here to the bottom right, we're going to be seeing a uh, hatchery on the way up, about 75% of the way done. Nexus is uh, coming down as well. And it is, again, stats map pick here on Newkirk Precinct. This is completely live right now, guys. Here on the 2nd of January, 2.18 a.m. GMT. So we are live right now. We're actually going to be casting one more series after this, I just found out. We'll cast Nurture versus Mighty Kiwi from Replays, as the Beast stream started a bit late today and did miss that match. So we're going to be casting that from Replays after this best of two. So we actually have another best two to bring you guys just to keep the action rolling. So lots and lots of StarCraft are coming your way. Go take a quick moment to say thank you very much to Faro Dan, who donates $25 and says, Happy New Year, best of luck to you in 2017. Thank you very much, Faro Dan, for the $25. Give me some SGI hearts in the chat. Happy New Year. And thank you for the kind words. Hope you have a great 17 as 2017 as well. Thank you very much for your donation. You guys have been very kind tonight. Appreciate it. See some STI hearts in the chat, please, as we, uh... It's gonna be seeing there's a death move over to the right-hand side. It's gonna be trying to pick up a couple of kills. And looking to see, uh... What's gonna be happening here as the Resonating Glaive starts on up in the main base. Gonna be seeing that, uh, Chrono Boost coming down there, and... It's gonna be seeing a couple of gates added on at the front as well. Just setting up and, uh, adding to this wall. So, super standard here. Resonating Glaive's opening. Something that we've been... Not seen so much of lately. Resonating Glare sort of fell out of popularity. The thing is, though, it's still a fairly good opening. Like, the Adepts can't see as much, so it's not used as often, but it's still pretty effective. It's just a little bit harder to decide when you want to commit in, and when you don't as well. So it's, uh, it's a little bit interesting. And as we're going to be seeing these uh, links just back away. I'm just going to be backing away in towards the center of the map, and I'm just going to be seeing again Lair on the way up here, down to the bottom right-hand side. You see this extract on the way up, going to see a Rotron building as well. And you see the third hatchery already finished. Just continue to see how things go. Rotron's about 75% uh, of the way done, and again, just seeing uh, how things end up. A few more Lings on the way out. I'm just going to be seeing the uh, few adepts moving forwards here and uh, picking off one of those Zergans to begin with as well, so... I'm just going to be uh, continuing over to the right-hand side, and Wally, well, he has some Zerglings, but he needs to make sure he gets a few more up. He's got some Roaches on the way as well, and that will definitely help him out here. As we can see, the first Ling's already coming in, but mm, losing a few doesn't really do anything. Not even any damage, really, on these adepts. Some very minimal amount of damage to a few of those, uh, to a few of the shields. But that's about it. Zergans going to run forwards again. Does grab one of these adepts in the front. More Ling's trying to see what else is going on as well as Adepts straight back down into the natural where they're joined by three more Adepts. 
Ling's still going down here. And the thing is, there just isn't many roaches right now. Four of them in total. He'll get rid of this queen as well. I guess we'll jump back into main. No, goes for the female drones instead of the queen. Six workers killed and back into the main base. Drones still being targeted down. And Stats continues to deal damage here. And in the early stages of game number one. 11, 12 workers killed. 13, 14 now as well. Going into now even more workers. Oh my god, these are deaths. They just don't die. Well, they are dying, but very, very slowly. 18 workers in total. And there's three more adepts currently. A few of them walk into the natural. I guess he'll commit to the shade over in the third base because, well, there's more drones to be picked off over here, although he stops just a little bit earlier. We're just going to be seeing these uh, adepts picking their way through and just going to be uh, getting rid of this queen. So queen goes down, and again, a couple of drones will be uh, getting picked off here as well. There's a few more still going down. I can't believe this. Damage is insane! Stats has just done so much here in the early stages, and that is going to be, what, 25 workers killed? Absolutely insane amount of damage done. Really, truly, Stats just puts himself into a great position. I mean, 12 workers ahead is great for a Pearls player. Only has to make sure he has enough army to defend a counterattack, as that's actually exactly what Wally's heading in towards right now. 16 lings on the way, although there won't be very many more, because now he's supply blocked. Three overlords coming up. He has a good amount of roaches, a couple of ravages as well. I'm just going to be seeing them moving forward. We're going to see a couple of overcharges available here on this mothership core. It'll be a big part of the defense and force fields as well. It's a bit too far back. Maybe could have trapped a couple of roaches in range of the overcharges, which would have been nice. And free pickoffs. As here we go, actually going to be seeing a re engagement. Roaches and ravages moving forward. The Zerglings as well. Guardian Shield has popped. And that roach goes down too here at the front. And he's going to be seeing Wally just. Uh, well, more than a few more Ravagers. He's definitely committing to this. Not making any more drones, more Lings and Ravagers just on the way. Getting set to go once more. So, starting to uh, spread on out and getting ready to go once again here. You can see a few Lings around the top. It's just not that many. Overcharge preemptively dropped by stats just to buy himself more time. Time is everything excess right now. We'll see a Warp Prism on the way out, which you might not think would help him in this defensive position here. But the micro the Warp Prism allows him to do is actually really, really nice. And that could actually add a lot to this. He's going to see the Force Fields coming down. Couple of Corrosive Bars connect, but onto the Immortals. A nice dodge once again at the last moment here to keep these Immortals healthy for as long as possible. And Wally is not going to break on through. And that is going to be stats taking game number one. That's for first place, $1,000 for second place. Um... Eight hundred dollars for third, five hundred dollars for fourth, three fifty for top six, three hundred top eight, two two five top ten, one seven five top fourteen, and it just keeps on going down in increments of twenty five. This is why you guys should have read the Liquipedia page instead of me trying to say because it just doesn't work and I mess it up and say wrong things. Top right hand side, our blue Protoss player is going to be Splice Stats. And to the top left hand side, it's going to be. Our green Zerg player, it is Wally. Early gas, early pool. He's off to be an aggressive once again. It's actually kind of crazy how much money has been given out in OSC events this year. Um, so yeah, um, it's kind of crazy how much money you can get out in OSC events this year, like, I think it's over like 100k, it's really crazy, and it's just because there's so many different partnered events that uh, players can gain points from, such a cool system, but of course we don't have the chance to uh, talk about this right now, as we do have these links already moving across the map here, now stats, went for a second gateway early, and he's going to lose that pylon at the front. Now, the thing is, his cyber core just finished, so no mothership core yet. If he loses this pylon, it could be scary for him. As these probes do pull down to fight against this. Lings will turn once again. Probes taking a bit more damage. Another pylon begins to build. So important here, as actually these probes again stuck in the bit of a corner. The mineral will walk through to get out of there as the first adept pops. Lings still looking to try and surround this. Gets the surround before even Link speed pops up, although then the adept slides away. Slippery little adept, that one. And as we're going to be seeing these Lings moving forwards once again as well. And actually going to be cancelling the third Nexus. Stats just wants a bit more money to spend right now. As he is, uh, I guess he is without kind of a lot of mining. And so he is losing out on quite a bit here. He's actually only on 16 workers. To have so many pulled off the line means his income is going to be so low in comparison to the Zerg. As now we're in fours, these lings get a bit of a surround. And probes are starting to drop down. And Wally takes down one Adept. Goes into the main base. He's going to chase down probes. You know what? Wally might just win this right here and right now. 
because he's going to kill like so many probes. There's one Adept I don't think can save the day. Uh, I mean, probes turn to fight at the same time as the Adept is here. Another Adept finishes in Shade, comes on in. 11 workers killed. While he's making more Zerglings. Hmm. I mean, more Zerglings is nice. Oh, this is so weird. This is so weird. 16 drones to 7 probes. 15 army to 8. More things being made because I think Wally realizes he's in a good position. He can just keep on fighting. And these adepts are going to kind of shade on by, which is not a good thing for uh, stats, I don't think. Because these lings are just going to run in towards the main base mineral line and get more worker kills. Obviously, that's what these adepts are aiming to do as well. But it's going to be st uh, stats. He's just losing that worker mining just a little bit sooner. Drones will pull into fight against these uh, adepts as well. And they will start to do quite a bit. Ling's just going to sit in the main, pick off another probe, and just continue to deny mining. And Adept moving forwards. These Adepts over here are going to shade away towards the main. More Ling's coming out to clean these up, and eventually those Adepts go down. I don't think Stats can keep up with this. GG is called, and Wally will take game number two, and he will take down Stats. Wow, Stats has not had a great day. He's had so many 1-1 finishes.